everyone. Uh, welcome to the Regenerative Medicine Foundation and our interview series where we're bringing to you, the audience, and the general ecosystem of regenerative medicine, uh, interesting uh, individuals that are making a difference in our field. So today, I'm very pleased to uh, have the opportunity to uh, interview Wen Shun Chu, who is uh, uh, one of our main collaborators, uh, and he is with the Center for Regenerative Medicine at Mayo Clinic. Welcome, Wen Shun. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Bernie. This is a great honor and privilege to be uh, with you today, and uh, I'm happy that we can discuss a little bit about what we are doing, what I'm doing uh, in this field. Thank you very much for the invitation. So, Wenchen, you are, have an MD, a PhD, and uh, what is your affiliation with Mayo Clinic, and what are, you, what are the fields that you're working in? I am, well, uh, actually, I work at two fields. One is I am a physical medicine and rehabilitation specialist, physiatrist, and then also I'm a pain specialist, and I used to work in two departments, and I was doing, uh, recently uh, focusing on this pain medicine. And after pain medicine, actually, we're working a lot on spine. On the spine. And uh, uh, are you involved with uh, physical medicine and rehabilitation as well? That's correct. So that's, uh, if you look at my research portfolio, we have research on spine, and then we, I also have research in uh, spinal cord injuries, and that is from the physical medicine and rehabilitation part of it. I'm, I'm, when I'm saying my research, I'm talking about the uh, cell therapy, cell-based therapy research in these fields. So I'm uh, working on both sides. And for your cell-based therapy, what type of cells are you working with? Uh, we work on both the autologous and the allogenetic mesenchymal stem cells, MSCs. And uh, these cells uh, are also derived from either adipose tissue or bone marrow. These are the cells we have, cells we have been using the most. So uh, you're very involved, of course, in the very uh, robust Center for Regenerative Medicine at Mayo Clinic. And uh, for the audience uh, that's listening to this, uh, would you explain uh, the size and scope of the Center for Regenerative Medicine? We're all mindful that Mayo Clinic uh, in its own branding is considered the largest medical practice in the world. So uh, uh, you're in Scottsdale, Arizona, Jacksonville, Florida, and Rochester, Minnesota. So share with us some background on the Center for Regenerative Medicine. The Center of Regenerative Medicine at Florida has been a very active organization in Mayo Clinic, Florida, that has a variety and uh, wide scope and uh, breadth of uh, research, including the iPS cells in a basic science perspective, where we are developing the cells that can cover 30 to 40 percent of the U.S. population. With those cells, we are going to be able to develop a variety of cells, including MSCs, that is going to derive not from bone marrow, not from adipose tissue but from the IPS cells. We are also developing a large number of clinical trials that are either active or in the pipeline. And these clinical trials are uh, well, well organized in multiple uh, specialties, including rehabilitation medicine, including the uh, GI, and then including pulmonary cardiology. There are a number of trials that are ongoing and uh, uh, I just uh, find that it's amazing that so many people are working on it and there's so much progress has been made. The reason we are going to uh, be uh, making so much of a progress is that the support from the leadership is really strong because we are trying to uh, develop this center of regenerative medicine, a leader in the Southeast U.S. and maybe in the country. Those are the efforts we put in there. Lots of uh, investment has been provided. I hope these are going to bear good fruits. Thank you. Well, you know, in Jacksonville, um, where the, uh, the Center for Regenerative Medicine is located in Florida, there are a couple of researchers and uh, clinicians that um, have presented at our, the World Stem Cell Summit, including Dr. Um, uh, Zubair, Abba Zubair, who uh, has uh, actually sent his uh, cells 
up to the International Space Station at the U.S. National Lab uh, for uh, research on microgravity, and also Dr. Shane Shapiro, who's very well known as uh, one of the leaders of the field. So certainly you have, uh, um, amongst your colleagues in Jacksonville, uh, wonderful researchers uh, and uh, leadership. So thank, thank you for you. that. Thank you. I feel well supported in this uh, because you are surrounded by the giants of this field. And then they are really providing substantial help and support for my research because I, my cells are uh, made by, manufactured by Dr. Zubair's lab. And then the leadership is providing resources, including a lab, including funding. So I, I'm just very grateful that I can get the work done here. You mentioned, you know, uh, when I've um, been to Mayo Clinic and uh, participated in the Mayo Clinic Symposium on Regenerative Medicine, uh, what I found remarkable is the pool of patients that uh, are there and available at the Regenerative Medicine to enroll in clinical trials. And this is a particularly uh, empowering in a way that uh, you, you have these patients that they, uh, that uh, manifest all sorts of medical conditions and it allows uh, Mayo Clinic and the Center for Regenerative Medicine to really uh, progress trials in ways that other institutions cannot. We do have the uh, advantage of uh, access to patients because the Mayo Clinic is known and is focused on rare and complex conditions and also we are sitting in three large populations in Rochester, we're seeing a large number of patients from the, the closed by area, but also from everywhere in the country. Uh, Arizona is the fifth largest city, if I'm not wrong with the number. It has a huge population over there. Southeast uh, uh, U.S., you know, Florida, Georgia uh, area, we have a large population in here Jacksonville. too. Jacksonville, you, you've recently moved to the Jacksonville Center. Uh, that's right, that's so just particularly because how uh, Jacksonville is uh, advancing regenerative medicine at a very high speed. So I'm here to taking advantage of this uh, opportunity where we have access to patients, we have access to resource, where we can uh, uh, you know, just uh, improve this part of the uh, enterprise. Welcome to Florida. Thank we you, can Lisa. use you, I assure you. So listen, let's talk about uh, uh, the uh, recent study that was published in the journal Stem Cells uh, Translational Medicine. And for viewers, they might not be aware, that is the official journal partner of the organization that I lead, the Regenerative Medicine Foundation. And uh, this study uh, uh, and has been reverberating, especially on social media, and where the, the researchers, and you were the lead author, have a call uh, to action. It involves MSCs, ARDS. Would you explain the, the genesis of the study, uh, what it shows, what trends it shows, and what needs to be done? It is a, um, interesting that you would find that me, not as a pulmonologist, writing a paper about this, but actually it started, I started with a conversation with Mayo Clinic pulmonologists uh, and then what we do is that we found that actually, if you look at the COVID-19, of the current studies, of course, vaccine is the most important one for preventative measures, but for treatment, so far, we have not identified particular treatment that would really uh, improve the mortality. And we found that MSC may have an opportunity because of the sheer history of MSC's immunomodulating effect has, that has been used for a large inflammatory reaction, which is in a GVHD situation. And then the COVID-19 for severe patients, the most pro, uh, problematic uh, uh, is in a condition is the ARDS. And with the ARDS, there's a large inflammatory process going. So we came up to the idea, so is really uh, MSC, you know, this is, is this really an opportunity that the MSCs can 
be used with its immunomodulatory effect in this large inflammatory process. And then where is the evidence? And we have to look into it. And then therefore, uh, we have a team that actually we had like five fellows. We have the most uh, renowned uh, uh, evidence-based medicine researcher uh, uh, in the center of uh, evidence-based practice. We build a team together so that to look into the effect of MSC on ARDS. The findings are, are quite interesting because of 200 patients that has ever been treated with MSC, those are the patients with ARDS, we found that actually there is a good trend of mortality reduction. And that is just very exciting. We know 200 patients has been treated in clinical trials of that 117 received MSC therapy. And then this is not a large sample to find out the definitive answer, but we did find a 18% uh, of a mortality reduction. And that's a good place to get started. I think that we need to dive deeper into this finding and further study and see if that's going to be a real uh, effect that could be associated with MSC therapy. Winchen, it caught my attention that uh, some of your co-authors of this uh, uh, analysis are some of the most preeminent MSC uh, researchers in the field, including Joshua Hare, who heads the Interdisciplinary Stem Cell Institute at the University of Miami, Joanne Kurtzberg at Duke, uh, Arnold Kaplan at Case Western, who is often identified as the father of MSCs. So uh, certainly you brought in a, a wonderful group of authors into the study. So uh, is there a call to action that you have as uh, preeminent researchers in the field, um, especially in, in light of what we're all enduring with the, with the huge pandemic that's sweeping through the planet? Um, what is the call to action? This, therefore, uh, Dr. Hare and Dr. Kurzberg and uh, Dr. Kaplan are the ones that actually are the anchor of the accuracy. For example, now we see some changes of the mortality. How do we explain for it? And so what is the exact mechanism that can be associated with it? So that therefore, in that paper, there has been lots of conversation to make sure that we do support this, uh, this finding with reasons that can be explained from the mechanisms of MSCs and the experience that has been similar uh, in the past research with MSCs. So we have a consensus and it is a very important to have this group of people to have the consensus that it is worthwhile to move further to examine the effect of mortality reduction with MSCs with large scale clinical trials, we have to do- and These are confirmatory uh, clinical trials. Precisely. So because we know from the past uh, studies, there has been altogether a 18% of a reduction of mortality, but we need to get a large scale clinical trial that we're gonna confirm whether or not this is true. So science, it could go either way. However, we have to go through the uh, stringent scientific process with uh, the uh, you know, uh, unbiased study as much as we can to confirm it either ways. But I'm very hopeful that uh, through the knowledge of the mechanisms of the cells, history of the cells for its application in uh, immunomodulatory effects, I think uh, there is a good chance that we are finding something that really is real. I think it's uh, important for the audience to note that the Regenerative Medicine Foundation is aligned with the Alliance for Cell Therapy Now uh, and many other groups that are calling for increased funding from the federal government of the United States to fund its such large-scale confirmatory trials. We're very eager to see the academic centers uh, in the United States engaged in this work. Already there is some uh, funding um, for some of the private companies that are looking into this as well. But ultimately, we hope uh, to learn more about MSCs uh, and their promise and effect. Before we leave the conversation, I wanted to uh, note that you are one of the leaders of the field of 
uh, regenerative rehabilitation. And this is something I had never heard of. I uh, heard a, uh, uh, I first learned of it when I was uh, at the Regenerative Medicine Essentials course in Winston-Salem, an event that I co-chair with Dr. Atala annually. And um, it opened up some uh, uh, interesting uh, possibilities. Uh, to me, regenerative rehabilitation, well, if, if rehabilitation can improve patient outcomes, uh, it seems to me that should be part of every uh, clinical trial. So help me out to understand, and so this audience will understand what the field is, if there are any groups out there who are studying this as a discipline, and where the field of regenerative rehabilitation is at this point in time. Well, this is a uh, very exciting field. Uh, rehabilitation medicine is about function. So we are the only function doctors uh, in the medical community. And the question of whether or not the uh, regenerative medicine can contribute to people's functional recovery, and all of a sudden you find that these words match very well together. So for example, what is the largest function loss in a patient that, you know, in a, a ailment that one can endure? And that is the spinal cord injury. So with spinal cord injury, people lose the function of the body from the injury and below. So cell therapy has been studied and then we finished the first uh, uh, clinical trial in the US where we conducted a phase one study using adipose-derived mesenchymal stem cell for treatment of spinal cord injury between two weeks to one year. We finished that study. First, we confirmed that it is very safe to use. Along with other studies we have done with uh, the similar application of MSCs for central nervous system conditions, we believe it's quite safe to use. Number two, we did find certain patients respond to cell therapy with a good uh, margin of improvement, even though we don't have a controlled trial yet, and that is the trial we are actually just getting started right now. So the first step of finding that patient can tolerate the cell therapy, and also some of the patient got functional recovery. That's exciting, and that's we are doing the next step of confirmatory studies with randomized controlled trial to see if that effect can be confirmed. So that's uh, one example of uh, uh, regenerative rehabilitation. But also, if you think about if somebody has a back pain, and I, I would ask the question, uh, how many people would uh, raise their hand and say, I never had a back pain. You don't see many hands. People have Sometimes back I have a back pain. <laughs> you know, that would, I would say, so a lot of people, it's so common. It affects function. Disc problem. So a high level athlete have a discogenic pain and that that's just uh, stopping their practice and stopping their performance and down the road affecting their quality of life. So we are treating discogenic pain with uh, uh, cell therapies to find out if that's safe and then if it is effective. And then a phase three study, uh, we are all aware that has been completed and are waiting, we're waiting for that uh, outcome to come out. But in the meanwhile, we are researching and investigating in the other cell lines, a new next generation of MSCs to see if that can be targeted towards disc, facet, and the sacroiliac joint and those kind of other. In the meanwhile, other musculoskeletal conditions such as osteoarthritis, and this is so common, can we stop or reverse the process of degeneration so that the patient can recover their function? So these are some of the examples of uh, regenerative rehabilitation, but there are much more to do in terms of how do we uh, maintain the uh, functions of the central nervous system? How do we regrow muscle in, in, this, uh, in, uh, in the event of the muscle has been uh, damaged and then so forth? Just a, a wide range of topics, a lot of hardworking, uh, researchers, and I'm very hopeful that uh, that field is going to be uh, uh, contributing quite a bit, bit to what we do uh, in terms of helping people with their functions and quality of life. 
So what we've learned from this conversation, besides the unmet need of having large scale confirmatory clinical trials for um, MSCs and ARDS uh, and how it relates to the pandemic, we also have learned the term regenerative rehabilitation and the place that that might have in our community and our, in our ecosystem. Winchen, I wanna thank you for taking the time and sharing this information with us. And I wish you the, really the best of luck in all your endeavors because they're very, very important. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure uh, being with you. And I welcome anybody who's interested in conversations to reach out and uh, I'll be happy to discuss and hopefully we can collaborate. Uh, it takes a village to make this uh, 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 with, with this regenerative medicine uh, advancement. So let's work together and uh, make things happen. Thank you very much. Thank you.